Hi boys and girls, time for some math. I have our I can statement already written down for us today and we are going to get right into it. So we have some story problems and our I can statement today says I can solve story problems with an unknown part and this is a super important part that we know. An unknown part is also the same thing as a missing part, okay? You might think, I don't really remember what you're talking about, Mrs. Garris, and that's okay. We will keep practicing today, okay? So, keep in mind, I can solve story problems with an unknown part. We want to make sure that we understand when a story is asking us to find a part instead of finding a whole number, okay? All right, let's get started. Let me make sure you have everything you need to be successful today. You need your whiteboard with a marker and an eraser. Okay, and then your lesson 12, excuse me, lesson 12 problem set. Okay, and something to write with on there. All right, cool. So, go ahead and pause me if you need to and go grab those things. Now, our application problem today says this. Ooh, I have a friend in my class. Let's see. Does my friend mm, DJ have a bookshelf? Ooh, let's see. Let's have our story be about DJ today. DJ had seven books on his bookshelf, okay? He had seven books on his bookshelf and then he went to the library and he got some more. Hmm. Then, once he went to the library, he came home and he put those books on the shelf. Then he had nine books on his bookshelf. So the question here is, how many did he get at the library? Hmm. Let's first draw a picture to help us figure this out. We know that DJ already had seven books on his bookshelf. Now, books are usually rectangles, so today, for my quick math drawing, I'll use squares. And I'm going to draw rows of five to make seven books that he already has on his bookshelf. Okay, you can go ahead and do this with me. DJ had seven books on his bookshelf. I'm going to start my number sentence, too. He went to the library and he got some more. Ooh, some. There's that word again. We don't know how many. Okay, so he had seven. He got some more. We don't know how many, so this is where we put our mystery box. We don't know that number yet. Okay, and when he had all his books on his bookshelf, so all together, then he had nine books. So the question here is, well, how many books did he have? Or did he get at the library? Okay, he got some at the library, we don't know. So let's finish our picture to help us, okay? We wanna figure out how many does it take to get from seven to nine, how many more? So over here, I'm gonna finish my picture by adding some more books until I get to nine. So when we did like our movement counting where we put our hands on our head and we started with a number and we counted on some more, we're practicing that strategy of counting on here. So, practice like you're putting this number in your head, and we're going to count up to nine. Okay, here we go. Seven. Let's count or draw more till we get to nine. Eight. Nine. Oh, now I need to stop because I made it to nine. I don't want to go over that number. How many more books did we have to draw? Right, we drew two more books. So he got how many books at the library? He got two books at the library, right? He did not get nine books at the library. Remember, the box is where our answer goes. The nine is the books he had all together. The two is where the ones he got at the library. So he had seven books already, plus two more from the library gave him nine all together. Nice work. Give yourself a pat on the back for that. Let's continue on. Let's practice some more unknown parts, okay, our missing parts. Let's go ahead and start with our, um, oh, remember my question mark? Let's see if you can figure one out on your own on your board, okay? 
Let me tell you my own story. So Zoe had six fish. She had six pet fish. Okay? But her brother brought her some more. Mm. Then she had ten fish. How many did her brother bring her? Hmm. Remember, this is this big question mark in this box that I drew. This is our missing part. We have a problem with an unknown part. Zoe had six fish. Her brother brought her some more fish. And now she has ten altogether. So how many did her brother bring? Ooh, can you draw a picture to figure out how many more fish her, her brother brought her? Hmm. How can we figure this out? We could draw a picture like we did in our last problem. We could use our fingers to count on. So last time we drew a picture to figure out. Maybe this time let's use our fingers. Let's try a different strategy, okay? So we're counting on from six all the way to 10, okay? Remember we knock to show six and then we count on to our, our 10, okay? Here we go. Six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Oh, stop. I made it to ten. How many fingers do you have up? You, you got it. Four. You should have four fingers up. Do six and four make ten? Yes, sorry. Six and four make our partner to ten. Good. So Zoe's brother brought her four more fish. Awesome work. If I did want to draw a picture, I could also do it this way. Six, let's say I didn't know my answer yet. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <gasps> Made it to ten. How many circles did I draw? One, two, three, four. Same answer, right? Different strategy. Good work. So just, you might decide right now, all right, which one did I like using more? Did I like drawing a picture? Or do I like using my fingers? Because those are both strategies you can use for our problem set today, which is the next thing we're going to move on to here, okay? So go ahead and get your math book. Go ahead and get your math book. You want the lesson 12 problem set that has books and cupcakes and bananas on it, okay? Books, cupcakes, and bananas. Now, this tells us to use our five group cards, but we don't have those. We have other strategies we can use, okay? Remember how I said sometimes when we're on, in online learning, we don't have the same things as we would if we were in the classroom. So we have to find other ways that work. And I think we do. We have two other options we can use, okay? So let's see. Our first story problem, or our picture problem, we'll call it, is there were three books and some more in the backpack. All together, there were five books. Hmm, how many books were in the backpack? I grab my pencil here and I'm gonna think to myself, okay, how many more do I need to get from three to five? How many books are in this backpack? We don't know, there's a question mark. It's a missing part. So let's use a strategy. What do you think? Why don't we do use the picture strategy this time? Okay, so there are three books already here. So stick three in your head. We want to count to five. I'm going to draw my circles right here under my line because I like to visually be able to see where my answer goes. Okay, so three, four, five. Oh, look, I'm already at five. How many more did I draw? One, two. Three and two make five. There are two books in that backpack. Awesome. Now for number two, we'll do both. We'll use our fingers strategy and we'll use our picture strategy, okay? There were five cupcakes on the table and some more in the box. All together, we had nine cupcakes. So how many are in the box? Hmm. All right, let's do our picture strategy first. 
What number do we want to start with? What number do we know? We know the number five. We know there are five cupcakes. We don't know how many are in the box, but we know how many all together. So what number are we going to be counting up to? Right, nine. We need to count from five to nine. Ooh, okay. Here we go. Five. Ooh, let's do our finger strategy. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, ding, ding, ding. I made it to nine. Now I look. How many fingers am I holding up? I'm holding up four. Let's double check it with our picture strategy. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do I also have four circles? Oh, one, two, three, four. Good. So both strategies gave me the same answer. Five and four make nine. There are four cupcakes in the box. Good work. Can you try number three on your own? Now your turn. Pick a strategy, your fingers or the picture strategy, and count on from four. There are four bananas. Some more are in the bag. There are ten all together. So how many are in the bag? We're going to want to count from four to ten. Hmm, what do you think? I'm going to give you another minute to try and finish up. Double check your work. Okay, are you ready? I'll start with the picture strategy. Okay, if you did the picture strategy, check your work with me. There are four bananas, so four, and I'm counting up to ten. Here I go. Four, five, six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoa, I have a lot of circles there. Let me see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six circles. Okay, let's see if I use my finger strategy. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I made it to ten. And I have six fingers up. So, yep, that must be the right answer. There are six bananas in the bag. If you got that answer, give your brain a kiss. Mwah! Put it on your brain. Good job. If you didn't, let's keep practicing, okay? We can go back and try a different problem. You could rewind the lesson and try again, okay? Now, <clears throat> our math book tries to trick us and give us some different kinds of story problems on the next page, but I only want to focus on those missing part questions today. So, we're not going to do the second page of our problem set today. You don't have to do it, okay? You can draw an X on the 4 and the 5 on this page. Okay, we might come back to them and use them as practice another day, so don't be, don't totally scribble them out, okay? And then we're going to come to our exit ticket. Our exit ticket today has fish on it, okay? It has some fish. There are There is a nice box here for you to draw a picture, okay, of the story. There are nice boxes here to make a number sentence. And if you're lucky, I might fill in one of the boxes in the number sentence for you on Seesaw when you go to do your exit ticket, okay? I'll read the story once here just if you want to listen. Otherwise, I'll read it again on Seesaw, okay? Your, your directions say to draw a picture and count on. That's the strategy we've been using. We've been counting on with a picture or counting on with our fingers to solve the math story. All right, just so you know, first graders, these fish are not part of your picture. These are just here for decoration and they sometimes confuse first graders and I don't want my first graders confused, so I'm telling you right now, these fish are not part of your picture. You will draw your whole picture down here, okay? Here's Bob. Bob caught five fish. John caught some more fish. They had seven fish in all. 
How many fish did John catch? Ooh. So Bob caught five. John caught some more. Hmm. Why don't I give you that answer right now? Not the answer, but I'll, I'll fill in a box for you. We know Bob caught five fish, right? John caught some more. We don't know, right? We don't know how many he caught. But this is what we want to find out. We do know they had seven fish in all. In all means all together. That means, oh, Mrs. Garris is being super nice today. She's going to fill in this box with you too. Hmm. They had seven in all. So they had Bob caught five, John caught some more. All together they had seven. How many did John catch? That's your job to figure out. Okay, so good luck. I can't wait to see your exit ticket on Seesaw.